Hello and welcome to my channel Inch by Inch Art. Today I'm going to be going over how I made these different snake minis. I did five different sizes of snakes, all from the monster manual for D&D 5e. Here you can see some tools I used. I made these handmade texture stamps. I'm probably going to do another video soon showing how I made them. To make this video not too redundant, given that snakes are basically just legless tubes, I'll just do this first snake rolling out a worm of clay that tapers down the further down it goes and has a head on one end that I put the details on. And the later ones I'll just speed up or skip through most of that process of rolling it out. Here you can see I'm using my small dotting tool to try and put face textures on the snake. This first snake is a tiny poisonous snake, so for my inspiration I went with a pygmy rattlesnake. Using my texture stamp to put scales down the body. And here I am coiling my clay to make sure that it will fit on the base the way I want and be in the shape that I want. I decided since it is fantasy inspired I would add some extra bits to it so I gave it little horns. Some snakes like eyelash vipers do have protrusions above their eyes like this that I thought were pretty neat so using that for inspiration. And here I am adding the little rattle. For all of these sculptures I used Super Sculpey. So next I'm going to be doing the giant poisonous snake, which is a medium sized creature, and I'm using a spectacled cobra as my inspiration for this. Rolling out my worm, making sure it's thicker on one end for the head. I added some extra clay on the front because of the hood and larger faces that they tend to have compared to their bodies. And I'm just using my cone-shaped silicone sculpting tool to press out the hood. Texturing scales. And I realized that it wouldn't be in the pose that I wanted without some support. So I took this piece of wire, I'm just bending it to shape and doing a little bit of tracheotomy here, <laughs> pressing it into its throat and neck so that it will be positioned in that classic upright position that you usually see depicted of cobras. I'm just covering the wire with a little bit of extra clay so that it doesn't stick out. I used Sculby Bacon Bond to secure all the snakes to their bases. I didn't show it on the first one because I actually hadn't done it at the time and thought of it later that it would be best if I just use this to secure them directly to the base. The small bases that I use are all the usual one inch wooden pucks that I use for a lot of my minis. I actually bought a one inch dowel and then cut little slices out of it. Using my sculpting tools to add more detail like throat scales and added little balls with a dotting tool to make the eyes. And that's my cobra sculpted. Now, moving on to the next size up creature, it is a constrictor snake, which is a large creature. For this one, I'm using a rainbow boa for my inspiration. They're very pretty constrictor snakes that I personally like. Rolled out my worm of clay for my snake, had some extra clay on the front for the end of the head, tapered down to the tail as usual, using my sculpting tool to sort of shape the head and my angled sculpting tool to press in a mouth. This all got much easier as they got larger, though to be honest, I was the least happy with this one. I don't know why, it just, I didn't quite like the head and I ended up redoing the body more than once. Um, I end up showing you one of the redos of the body later. 
using the dotting tool to do nostrils and the sensor pits they have along their lips and pressing in the back of the jaw details. Added some extra clay for the head to bulk it up and have an area for the eyes. I decided to actually press these eyes in rather than just do little balls and use my dotting tool. I thought since it was bigger that I could do it in a different way. It was nice being able to put more detail on the faces as they got larger. Bulking up the head some more because I didn't like how flat it was. And here, instead of using my texture stamp, I'm using a tool handle that I have for texture. It just had a diamond cut pattern on it, so I decided to roll it all along the body. I did actually do it all over the body on the sides and on the top of the head, I just showed doing it on the top only. So now that I've got it secured to the base, I realized that I hate its body and head proportion. It just didn't look right. So this is what I was talking about with having redone the body. This is my actual third attempt. <laughs> um, I cut out the first one because it was just, I had rolled it far too small the first time. So it's just sort of making sure you get the right balance sometimes, making things look the way you want. This is one of my favorite parts, coiling the worm around to make it look like a snake body. The clay looks really neat as you're doing this and you, you really get the feeling that it's become a snake at this point. I just did kind of a classic pose that I've seen for a lot of boas, this head resting on its body wrapped around and secured it to the base. Now I'm moving on to my giant constrictor snake, which is a huge creature. So it's a three inch by three inch base. Same thing, worm of clay, thicker at the head. And then I start to texture and shape the body just a little bit. I decided to use an anaconda for the inspiration for this one. And I actually, I think this one came out the best out of all of them. Well, maybe not the best. I, the flying snake's coming next because I had a bit of a mess up earlier, but it's either my favorite or second favorite. <laughs> I'm not sure. So on to the facial details. Anacondas have very broad and short, blunted faces, so they have a very distinct face. So while I'm making it, I realize when I'm putting the eye on that it's too far back for the type of blunt snout that they have, so I move the eye forward and it gives it the right look that I want. It's interesting how just moving a detail piece a few millimeters can make a massive difference on minis and make it go from looking not quite right to looking perfect. Just adding some clay on the eyes. And again, because these keep getting bigger and bigger, I can add a lot more details in as I go. So the two bigger square bases are just a type of particle board that I've been recycling. I strengthen them a bit with PVA glue on the bottom. And then when I secure the snake to the top, I'm using the Scoby Bacon Bond for all of them. So here you can see I'm adding it. It helps strengthen it a lot, but they're just mini, so they don't get used too rough. Here's that part I really enjoyed again, twisting the body around, making it look like a snake. I did use my fingers to shape it a little bit and have it, I think you can kind of tell here, it's got a bit of a point at the top of the body where the spine would be. And I noticed when I curled it around, it looked really good. Again, just used a lot of reference images to try to see common poses that these snakes would be in to get an idea of what would look best. making sure that it fits on my face. Adding some more Scoby Bacon Bond to make sure that it's secured down really well. And just cleaning up the edges. I 
And here's all the snakes done. Well, almost all. So this was my original flying snake. I made it with green stuff and I hated it. It looked terrible. Probably barely even see it. It just, it was junk. So I decided to completely remake it. And since I did everything else with Sculpey, I figured I would just make it with Sculpey. I spent quite a while making that green stuff one, but it just, yeah. It, sometimes the material is just not right for what you're doing or you use the wrong approach. And I just decided that it needed to be redone. Here's me making the wings and using a little excess to make up a little ball that I'll use to make the head. And these are tiny creatures, the flying snakes, so it needed to be very, very small. So I couldn't do a whole lot of detail on the face, but I added a little bit of layer to it. I've poked the eyes in with just the tiniest dotting tool that I have. I'm pressing the wings on now. And there are gliding snakes, are real snakes, so I decided to sort of flatten the body out with the idea that even though it has wings, it might actually have a body similar to those gliding snakes that kind of splay out with their ribs. Here I'm just adding an extra little piece to the tail because I like the idea that maybe it has sort of like a feathered tail tip or like an extra thin piece that it maybe whips around in the air to help it direct itself. Gliding snakes whip their tails around to try to gain some control over their direction they're headed, so I thought that adding that was a neat way to add a little feature to it. Here I'm just using the Scoby Bacon Bond to press it down and then using another random tool that I have that happens to have a texture that I thought would make cool little scales and pressing it onto the back. Just cleaning up my Bacon Bond. This piece is so small I didn't want too much Bacon Bond sticking out because it would start to change the image. And it's time to bake. So that's going to be it for me for this week. That was just part one is sculpting. Part two next week is painting. If you'd like to see more of my art, please like, follow, and subscribe.